Spending time with friends and family is one of life's greatest joys. And when good food is involved, it has a way of creating memories and bonds that last a lifetime. I'm Teresa Myers, and it's my privilege to welcome you to Cooking and Culture, a celebration of the dishes and the stories at the roots of food traditions. Come meet our guests and let them know there will be one more for dinner. How are you doing, man? I'm, doing well. I'm the head chef and owner of East Wind Snack Shop in Brooklyn, New York, and a chef partner in Tonso in Nashville, Tennessee. Today we're going to make some dumplings. So dumplings are a great way to bring the family together. And in fact, uh, in the Chinese home, dumplings are a celebratory thing. Everybody's happy making them, cooking them, and eating them all together. And that pretty much equals family. Right, uh, you can't get any better than that. First, what we're gonna do is put together the dough, which okay. makes the uh, skins of the dumplings. I am the international sales and marketing manager for Hormel Foods. I manage Japan, South Korea, and I oversee the international pork business. It's pretty easy. A little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, mix that around, and you have your base. So we're gonna add some water to this. Okay. Watch your back, because it's hot water and you're gonna mix the uh, flour and the water together. And soon, you're gonna have a dough. So this is, you know, this is pretty much a simple recipe that anybody can make. That's what really kind of brings the whole family together. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets, kind of gets their hands into it. What food means to me in, in my household, in my culture, um, it's love because um, that's how my parents show their affection to me. You can take some of this dough, and then you can start eating it here. Um, there are no mistakes, so if you're put a little bit too much water, you can always add more flour. Probably need more water. Like One of the things that chefs do is they try to evoke childhood memories from people when they eat food. So you would sit down at the table with your family and your mother and your grandmother would cook great food and you'd have nothing but a great time. And those are some of the things that you remember for your whole life. How do you know when it's ready? It should be smooth. Okay. And um, and then that's basically it. If you want to try some of that, get your hands dirty, okay, right? I'll do that. I'll, I'll be the uh, the Chinese grandmother. Okay. And uh, I'll watch over you. So I grew up in Chinatown. The ducks and the sausages and the and the roast pork all hanging in the windows and you know the dumplings and that's where I really kind of got my love of food. Really, okay. when you need a dough, it's like kind of push. Okay. Fold, turn, push, fold, turn, push, fold, turn and you just need uh, a nice amount of flour so everything stays smooth. One of the things in Chinese culture, and I think it's the same in cultures all over the world, mm -hmm. is their love for family and their love for food. I've actually never hugged my parents. They've never said, no, I love you. We just don't do that in the Asian culture. But the way that they express their love and affection is through food. You look like you're almost ready okay. there, right? Yeah, so you got that, right? Okay, it's yeah, nice and smooth, yeah. right? So maybe just one more one more toss on it, and then we can kind of put it away and uh, make our filling. Okay, and so how's that done? And filling uh, consists of pork, ginger, onions, seasoning, which would be a little bit of salt, a little bit of soy sauce, water chestnuts, and uh, we're gonna use this uh, great bacon well, when I was a kid cooking with my grandmother, uh, we would uh, stand by the stove and she would be cooking uh, Chinese sausage and potatoes, uh, chicken wings, uh, and a lot of those things kind of got melded with what was available in America and New York City at the time. And so we, you know, we got a little bit of a taste of both cultures. So we have this great bacon that we're gonna impart into our dumplings mm -hmm. uh, and it's gonna make a little bit smoky, a little bit more richer. You have a great dumpling. Great, so, yeah. Yep. I, all these ingredients look very familiar to me when I, when my family made it, but um, bacon is something that we haven't used, so that's... For me, one of the best sounds in the world is hearing bacon sizzle on a yeah. pan, right? So we have this great bacon that we sear, and we're going to mix the bacon and the pork to make our mm -hmm. filling for the dumplings. So you'll mince up your bacon. A little bit of onion. We have these uh, great water chestnuts. It creates like little tunnels inside the meat where the juices can kind of flow. I, I remember visiting my hometown last year in, in China, and yes. instead of how are you, did you eat yet? Yes. So that's very common in, in my 
town where I grew up in. How about your town? You know, they want to cook for you, they want you to eat well, mm -hmm. and they want to basically, um, you know, impart their cooking ideas and their culture mm -hmm. to you. So whether you're a guest, whether you're a family member, uh, whether you're a stranger, you go inside a Chinese household, and that's the thing that they're going to offer you first, is food. My grandparents, they came over from China, and they tried to make a better life, and they tried to have, um, they basically tried to live the American dream. Get these uh, water chestnuts, okay? Okay. Uh, let's do some ginger for that extra oomph and that extra flavor that you want. Uh, you just want to get it uh, cut down a little bit and, um, so you don't have the big chunks when you're actually eating the dumpling. So what are some other alternative uh, meat ingredients, meat or, or seafood can, found in, you in something use, like this? Oh yeah, so in Chinese uh, cooking, you know, actually seafood is mixed with meat a lot. One of the earliest food memories I had was there used to be a little counter which uh, had uh, these dumplings uh, and they were called hagaos. I still can taste them to this very day. The best dumplings I've ever had. You know, I guess that's part of what drives me because I do a lot, I cook a lot of dumplings. So, you know, I was trying to hit that mark. I love how you slice these uh, scallions up quite thin. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be here all <laughs> It's beautiful. All fresh flavors, all fresh ingredients, uh, all fun. You don't know at the time, mm -hmm. but what your grandmother is doing is she's prepping you uh, to do the same thing for your family. It's, you know, it's handing these traditions down and uh, that's what really kind of binds a culture together, right? My grandmother did this with us. I will do this with my son and my son will do it with his family. You have your filling and it's pretty much mixed, okay. all right? If you want to mix that up a little bit more, you can do that. Okay, so Chris, I've uh, mixed this meat up real well and got a good workout doing it. What's next? And okay. We're going to make some skins from scratch. However, we also have some uh, uh, skins that you can buy in any Asian grocery store. They're just as easy to make. And uh, so we're going to show you both. Okay. So what you're going to do is uh, for this, you're going to cut a couple of nuggets just like that. Okay. So then you're going to shape it into a ball. I think this is where my kids can come in and help. Yes, so yeah. this is the this is the absolutely fun part of, of making yeah. dumplings. So you got you got your uh, balls of dough here. Mm -hmm. So um, a little bit of flour on the bottom of this, and then you're going to take your rolling pin and you press, and then you press again. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to flatten the sides. Uh, and that's your dumpling skin. Wow. Right, so. Wow, look at that, very similar. So let me, uh, let me fill this one because it'll dry out. So you, a little bit of filling. Okay. Right, take it, you pinch, 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 and then you can do this. And what you will have is a nice dumpling. Right wow, that looks beautiful. That, yes. That's the part where I failed when I was younger. <laughs> okay, can I so try one of those? Yeah, yeah, let's see what you okay. got. All right, so you get a little bit of flour. All right, All right. I think I can do this. But it's a rolling part, um, that's fine. Putting the meat in and folding it to get that beautiful shape that you've got, that's gonna be a challenge. It looks like you're a master already. It's about the same shape, Perfect. right? Perfect. All right, this is the hard part. <laughs> <laughs> is that about the right amount of meat? Yes. That's the actual trick. It's really just by practice. I wish my mom told me that. <laughs> <laughs> and what you wanna do is you wanna just seal it to the point where the filling is. Like this? You make it look so simple. How about this? I'll show you with the ready-made skins. Those okay, a little bit perfect. Easier. Okay. These have to be sealed with a little water. So you want okay. to take a little bit of water, put right. your finger in there, and uh, go around the whole perimeter of the dumpling. Once you do that, I'll show you another fold. Taco. Okay. All right, and you just press down. And what you want to do, push in, crimp up, Push in, crimp up, and turn it over. And what you'll have is a traditional pot sticker like dumpling, like that. That's that looks great. Like that. Yep. So, Chris, what motivated you to be in the restaurant business? So, I was always around food, uh, and a lot of that came through my mother, and a lot of that came through my grandmother. It was originally a love of eating and a love of knowledge of the food that I uh, later on aspired to cook in my own way. And they were always cooking and they were always feeding me really good things to eat. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's nice to develop a love of food early on. Bottom line, food makes people happy. And, you know, when you 
own a restaurant and you're looking upon your dining room and you're seeing the whole restaurant busy, people happy, everybody eating and everybody having a great time, you know, there's no better feeling. So China is such a big market for warm out foods. Not only do we export a lot of products to that big market of ours, but we make a lot of products that the Chinese consumers desire. Um, we've got one factory that makes just Skippy peanut butter <laughs> for the Chinese market. I love Skippy peanut butter. Oh, yeah. it's, it's delicious. Yep. And you can do so many things with it, of course. It's got a lot of advantages of being a trusted, well-established company. I think trust is the, is the main thing. Local is also very important. I think uh, it's going to be really embraced by uh, the Chinese people. A Fortune 500 company who has global ambitions is very, very important to me. It's fun to see that growth, and I think our employee resource group, or ERGs, have a lot to do with that. So the Hormel ERGs, also known as uh, employee resource groups, is very important to me. What HAPA means is um, Hormel's Asian American Professionals Association, but there's a deeper meaning to that. In Hawaiian language, HAPA means mixed cultures, and that's what we're, we are. We're a mixed culture um, in our group at Hormel Foods. It's important to have a diverse workforce. Okay. Um, in particular, having more people with knowledge of the Chinese culture, because as you're aware, um, you know, it's Chinese culture and the American culture is quite different. And so if people here in the corporate office, they know about the Chinese culture, we'll be more successful in the Chinese market. My name is Jen Dao, and I'm the supervisor of recruitment uh, within our human resource division. My parents were actually refugees after the fall of Vietnam. And as refugees, obviously, they weren't able to bring much back um, to the states here. But the one thing that they brought with them, of course, is their Vietnamese culture, their recipes, and just kind of their traditions that really that's what my brother and I grew up with. On the hand, dumplings don't take long to cook, right? They're little right. packets of goodness. And all you have to do is uh, get the inside pork to cook. And, uh, and, then you have, uh, and then you have dinner, you have lunch. It's really an opportunity for other Asian Americans to really connect. But along with that, you don't have to be Asian to be a part of HAPA. You know, we have a lot of people who are just overall just interested in the culture. So here, we've got our dumplings, and we're gonna go over to the stove. My name is Paul Atwater, I work for Justin's, and I'm the Senior Director of Sales for the Western Region. The Hormel ERGs not only, I guess, illustrate the diversity, but also the inclusion, which I think is far more valuable. So I'm gonna do some uh, pot sticker style dumplings, and then we have some water that we can just do uh, straight boiled dumplings. Uh, they, these tend to have a nicer bottom. So then you're gonna add water to this. About a quarter of the way, a third of the way up the dumplings. Okay. One thing that you always hear about Hormel is that we're a big family. And not only get to learn more about different cultures and heritage, and even the new and emerging consumers of the world, but also about learning more about Hormel. It really shows that Hormel cares about their people, and um, as the company becomes more diverse, more global, it's important that when we are out there recruiting that we have a more diverse population of candidates to recruit from. So this takes me back to eight years old in Chinatown with my grandmother. Dumplings are served. Oh, that looks amazing, Chris. Everybody has a different background, everybody has a different story, and being able to bring that within the company really helps diversify the company and then also bring different backgrounds, different thoughts, different ideas into Hormel Foods to hopefully help continue to grow and expand our business. Our portfolio is becoming as diverse as the people that, that we are bringing to our company. And that, I think, is going to make all the difference in, in how we compete and succeed in the future. Food really brings us together. Food really connects us. And to be able to be around family and kind of just share that experience with each other, I think, is great. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Cooking and Culture. To learn more about the brands we featured, Hormel Fresh Ground Pork, House of Sang Sauces, and Hormel Black Label Bacon, visit our website, hormelfoods.com. We look forward to dining with you again.